Hi everybody, I'm here in deepest rural Suffolk, a hundred miles outside of London, to interview Stuart Pearson Wright. An artist who seems to have a ruined castle in his back garden. Stuart Pearson Wright is an award-winning British portrait artist with something of a dark sense of humour. Hi. Hi. Nice to, nice, to nice to meet you. Come in. Uh, so this is my studio. Wow. It used to be an old dairy barn. This one here I did when I was a student. And this is Percy, my snake. He's, um, he looks like he's hiding away at the moment. At ING, we're really proud to have one of your pictures, Domestic Scene. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Was that your own bathroom? Yes, that was my bathroom where I was living in the East End of London uh, until very recently. Mm -hmm. And it was an ex-girlfriend who was in the picture. And I think I'd been looking at Bonnard and he painted lots of, sort of domestic interiors with himself and his wife or girlfriend. But I liked the idea of starting to make a series of works which told sort of quite banal, everyday stories in, in my own life. Some of your works are sort of quite, quite gloomy, quite dark. Mm. You don't seem like a particularly dark and gloomy person. No, I am. I'm an incredibly dark and gloomy person. I, I don't think really anyone who makes any kind of art form wouldn't have a gloomy side to them because I think if you don't have any gloominess to your personality you wouldn't really have anything to say. Your work seemed to refer to um, the early Flemish painters and the yeah. British romantics. What attracts you to that genre? I was very curious about how they painted and I, I did a little bit of research you know, into the, the processes, the, the way they would work in a, in a green underpainting and then paint in colour over that. I actually cross-hatched the whole design of the painting just in black paint and then put colour on top of that. I don't do any of that anymore. <laughs> Life's too short. There are too many paintings to make in too small a space of time. I have a family to feed, so I can't really work that way anymore. I remember doing a drawing of my stepfather when I was very young, I must have been about six or seven, and it was very obviously a drawing in which I was thinking about his character and, and looking at his posture and the way he sat and the way he had his foot up and the way he held his cigarette and all of these details, all of those things seemed important to me at that point. It is this interesting character as well, I'm just always looking at faces and trying to read people's histories because I think you can tell a great deal about someone's life from their face. I paint myself partly out of habit, because uh, I always have done. Uh, my rates are always cheap. Um, I'm always available, night or day. Um, I'm the best sitter. I also do find myself quite interesting to draw, because I think I've got a very strange head. I think if you see an artist self-portraits over the course of a lifetime, they do sort of tell a story, a version of events, if you like, and I find that very interesting. I would rather be on the stage than painting. Um, well, I mean, I started off in amateur dramatics, so I did a lot of acting when I was, and, well, until I went to art school. I'd been in a small town and had been playing the main parts and then I auditioned for West Side Story when I got to uh, art school and I wasn't offered the part of Tony and I was devastated. I thought perhaps it's time to focus on painting. Mm -hmm. 